And now to look at a desktop which has probably spawned more forks than any other open source project, the GNOME desktop. So it started out life in 1999 and has seen many different style changes. So latterly what became GNOME Shell is now GNOME 3, that people seem to have disliked, although not to the vocalness of Unity desktop. Although the fact that more desktops seems to have spawned out of it probably proves that some people did dislike it. So GNOME has a GTK toolkit, which has found life in other desktop environments, which is kind of a bit strange because KDE came out around the same time as GNOME and has seen very little in the way of forking. And actually, very few, tool very few desktops use the Qt toolkit that appears in KDE. So what happened to GNOME? Why did this all happen this way? <laughs> Who knows? But let's take more of a look at it. So I'll start with taking a look at the memory usage and it's using 674 meg of RAM without doing anything much. I'm going to start tearing into this desktop straight away here. What is it with about these application title bars? The only button we get by default is the close button. Tough luck if you want to minimize it. Nope. Drag it down. Yeah. Can shove it onto a different activity. Yeah. Can shove it over there. Activities being the alternate for multiple desktops but no minimize button by default. Another thing that annoys me about the GNOME desktop is that it doesn't seem to know whether it wants a global menu or a local menu, or does it want to shove everything in the application title bar? Yeah, okay, Look, like it's done here in Nautilus. Got loads of things up in the application title bar. If you open a non-GTK application, let's just say something like LibreOffice Writer, what do we get this time? Oh, look, we have a uh, part of a global menu and then the menu down here below the application title bar. It is such a mess. Pick one route and stick with it. And what about a cute application? Well, we've got a different style here because it's not obeyed the dark theme. But yeah, we've got the menu below the application title bar and we've got mm, one thing in the global menu this time. Wow. Severe lack of cohesion in the GNOME desktop. So looking at the application searcher, so it picks up your frequent applications first. You've got a text searcher here, so, and it's very responsive. Let's try and pick up a calculator, shall we? CA. It's got it within a couple of key presses there, and I can move the arrow keys to select a calculator. Can I undo? Yes. Something I haven't really tried. Can I go back to the beginning? Oh, yes, I can. The searcher finds both applications and documents. Penguins. It's a bit reluctant to find documents though. You almost have to point it in the direction, <laughs> very specifically. <laughs> very specifically. It seems to favour applications well over and above documents. And it even offers you applications that you can install. What if I search for Chromium? Yeah, so it offers me Chromium web browser. I've never really got on that well with activities in GNOME. I know it's multiple desktops, but I don't know, I suppose I just don't use multiple desktops particularly much these days. I suppose the feature's there if you want it. The desktop layout is very clean, really. I suppose that's about as clean as you can get for a desktop. Looking at the Alt Tab application selector, yeah, that's nice enough. You've got a nice large icon of the application. The tweak tool does offer quite a few changes that you can do to the system. So I've gone for this global dark theme. There's quite a few extensions you can add. And you'll notice there the scroll bars are the narrow. Seem to be responsive enough and easy enough to pick up. You've got window scaling option here for the high definition displays. I've complained about Nautilus enough times so far, so yeah, we'll just say it's missing a lot of features that it used to have. Go across to the pictures folder. I'm just going to open up a couple of things I just downloaded, I was messing around with. So, which was this? Is this the image viewer or the photo viewer? Wrong program. The reason I've gone for the photo viewer is that you've got a few little editing tools. And one particular one here is you can crop the image. That's weird, if I've got the arrow pointing downwards, I expect it to just be resizing downwards. I don't expect the image ratio to change with it. I can untick it there, lock in the aspect ratio. Yeah. Opening up a program here and just looking into gedit, text editor. It's got uh, colouring for the various components of the file. 
There's a very striking theme there with the dark background. So I can open it in Kate as well, and I commented on the fancy scroll bar in the Unity video, which I did yesterday. If I open up a video, which doesn't seem to render particularly well yet, uh, okay, just want to pause that. So do we have multimedia integration there on the application? No, we don't. Do we have it over this side? No. You'll notice the menu on the right-hand side is combined volume control, networking, shutdown, and entering the control panel. The shutdown menu lacks a suspend button by default. Seriously, why is there any reason you would remove the suspend button from the operating system? People don't want to have to leave their desktop computers running all the time. No, it's not a problem if you've got a laptop, you can just shut the lid. But I can't just shut the lid to my computer. I don't know. Removal of features. Come on GNOME, don't do it so much. There's quite a variety of extensions you can add back into GNOME. Looking on the website extensions.gnome.org. I was talking about a suspend button, so yes, happily you can have a suspend button added. So let's try it on. Install, yes. Nice feature about the website, the on off buttons look exactly like the GNOME settings. Hmm, bit of consistency there. And now we have a suspend button. I'm not going to click that though. The feature is back. So it seems like you could get quite a nice usable desktop by adding more extensions to it. But that to me is not a sign of a good desktop. You shouldn't have to add more features that you have to download to it to make it good. The software center in the GNOME desktop is very good. It's very fast and responsive. Although it doesn't have every application in here, but uh, just give you an example, GIMP. How embarrassing. It doesn't even have GIMP in here. Inkscape. No, it has that one. Yes. So I've just opted to install it straight away, but I could have looked at more information about it, couldn't I? Yes. And got some application ratings and reviews here. So that was a look at the GNOME desktop. I mean, overall, I don't particularly like it. It's not a particularly fluid desktop to use. It's a very scattered approach that they've got with like the global menu or local menu. The menus are scattered around. The Layout of the applications differs. I don't like how they've removed features over time. It's If the features have been surpassed by something better, I would understand, but they haven't. They've just removed features to quite a few programs. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.